Okay, so let's take a look here very quickly at this idea. We have different style guides for different areas, and you can see by the thickness of this uh, paper here, some of these style guides are thin, and uh, some of these style guides are thick. Look at this Chicago Manual of Style. Oh boy, that is one thick book, right? In general, MLA tends to be thinner. MLA tends to have less clear rules, whereas the APA does have more rules. In fact, if you look at this little graphic here, this is a great MLA graphic that they supply. Basically, they lay out, this is what we want you to do. We want you to have author with a period. We want you to have title of source with a period. Then we want, what is that inside, comma? Is there any contributors other than that, comma? What's the version number, comma? Number, number, comma. What's the publisher's name, comma? What's the publication date, comma? Then end it with a period after the location if you need it. Basically, if you include these things with the comma and period correctly, you've got your reference down. So that's a really great way that the MLA has given you a guideline rather than a list of rules. APA is different in their approach. The APA is really laying out all of these rules throughout this whole book. Which way is a better way? You know, I use APA all the time because my area is business and psychology. So I've kind of gotten used to the APA way. I like this idea that I can look up any situation, any combination, and I can find exactly what it should be. However, it is quite complicated at times that you need to check out all these different things and you get to worry about it. MLA, on the other hand, is much more focused on their goal, which is can the reader find the reference? That's the main goal they lay out, and they try to help you to do that by giving you this graphic by saying, include these things, and the reader should be able to find what they're looking for. Okay, so that is the general introduction. I think that the main point here is become an expert on this. It's not that hard. It's way easier than the research you've done for your topic. But don't get lazy on this part. And when you do your defense, this is the one really objective, simple thing that the people on your committee can look at and say, you can't even do this. You cannot even be consistent. You can't even follow the rules. How can I trust that your research is real? All right, I'm trying to be positive, right? Try not to be negative, try to be positive. The positive point is don't lose your chance to look professional on the part that's actually easy. Why? Because you've got the rules. Why? Because you've got the book, right? Not because you just copied it off online somewhere, not because a friend told you what to do and you just follow what they did. Or the worst part is you just made it up one by one and said, well, maybe this should be capital and maybe this should be lowercase and maybe this should be underlined and maybe this should have a date with parentheses. Whoa, blows my head, blows my brain apart. I've seen that so many times. I've seen over and over again, committee members, this is what they look at to see, can you at least follow the basic professional research instructions? Good luck.